this week on Christian World News. Churches across Canada set ablaze. What's the reason behind the string of attacks? And why isn't Canada's government doing more to stop it? And the amazing message one church leader has for the attackers. Plus, chaos and suffering in Haiti. In the aftermath of the president's assassination, gangs are ruling the streets, while tens of thousands are fleeing the country. And missionaries are targeted for violence. And an all-terrain wheelchair. See how this unique vehicle is taking the disabled to the great outdoors and meet the amazing ministry that is making it possible. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. My colleague Wendy Griffith is out. Churches in Canada, they are burning. Since June, at least 56 churches have been set aflame or vandalized. Police are investigating the incidents as suspicious, yet the response from Canada's national leaders has been tepid at best. Still, one church leader who lost his beloved place of worship has a remarkable message for the attackers. Take a look. Just after 3.30 a.m. on July 19th, in the Canadian city of Surrey, British Columbia, Stephen Falters awakens after calls from an alarm company and fire department about an incident unfolding at his church. When I got to our church, it was a, a very difficult scene. Video shot by a neighbor around 4.30 shows St. George Coptic Orthodox Church fully engulfed. Faltas is a board member at the church. The street was completely closed. Approximately four or five fire trucks all fighting the blaze, police cars. Uh, the scene was quite dramatic, uh, surreal, to be honest. It's the latest in a string of arson or vandalism against churches across Canada. They hit 43 churches and 10 were hit in a single day. In Calgary, 10 churches, one city, one day. Shocking. Those 10 incidents happening in Alberta province. A pillar of the community over a century years old reduced to rubble overnight in a blaze. Where an officer with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police tells CBN News they have deemed the acts as suspicious. We are actively looking for suspects so that we can um, hopefully uh, hold those uh, who committed the acts accountable for, for the damage and uh, you know, the turmoil that they've caused. Calgary police releasing photos of several suspects wanted in their investigation. When a faith community is targeted for vandalism or arson, it not only impacts those directly affected, but leaves others in the same faith feeling unsafe. The arson and vandalism follows revelations of hundreds of unmarked graves at former if boarding schools for Indigenous well, children, many which were Catholic-run. After the discovery, churches began to burn across Canada. And although most of the churches attacked have been Catholic, several non-Catholic congregations also suffered damage. It's tragic that churches are being caught in the crossfire of a long and difficult political process that we as in the Orthodox community hasn't been involved with. While Canada's Prime Minister Canada. Justin Trudeau calls burning of churches an unacceptable response to the unmarked Indigenous graves, Conservative talk show host Ezra Levant says any comments from Canadian national leaders to the church attacks has been tepid at best. You've got churches under attack all around and frankly, no one willing to stand up for them because that's not politically correct. If these were mosques or synagogues, they'd have a hundred champions. But Christians, I'm afraid, are the last acceptable group in Canada to discriminate against, even with violence and arson. Levant says the other side, however, has been brutal at times. For example, the recent tweet, burn it all down, that led to the resignation of Harsha Walia, leader of British Columbia Civil Liberties Association. This activist seemed to be saying, if you're a Christian, you deserve to be burnt and scared and picked on by virtue of your Christianity. Levant says politicians have used churches that stayed open during the pandemic as scapegoats. In the province of Alberta, three different pastors were jailed for refusing to close their church 
churches were demonized as super spreaders. They were scapegoated for the pandemic. It was reminiscent of language that was used against the Jews in Germany 80 odd years ago, that they're disease carriers, they're infecting society. Members of St. George's recently held a vigil outside their burnt church, vowing to rebuild. Faltas told CBN News that he has a message for whoever destroyed their beloved place of worship. The only thing that we can say to those perpetrators is, um, as Christian believers is, uh, we forgive you. We would obviously would love to have our church still standing, um, but at the same time, we're strong believers that uh, although today may be a day of mourning, God will provide and tomorrow will be a day of joy. Joy does come in the morning. Turning south to Haiti, where the Caribbean island nation is in chaos after the assassination of its president. Tens of thousands of Haitians are fleeing the country as gangs are taking over and violent crime is on the rise. But as Chuck Holton shows us, one missionary family is putting their lives on the line to help people survive this crisis. A nation in turmoil as Haiti reels from the sudden assassination of their president on July 7th. Gangs rule the streets and nobody's sure of the rightful new leader of the country. The consensus is on the ground, everyone just says, gouvernement. There's, there's no government. Living in what's now essentially a failed state, Haitian citizens are suffering without basic supplies. Out here, what we do know is that, that the gangs, because they control parts of the city and they control the main routes that, that come out here to the southern part of Haiti, this whole southern peninsula, everyone is, is suffering. There's just a lack of, of any kind of materials out here, even propane. Uh, because the drivers were afraid that the gangs were going to shoot at their trucks and, and have an explosion. And after the funeral for President Moise, arrests of Colombian mercenaries implicated in the crime have left more questions than answers. The Haitian people did not expect this. The last assassination of Haitian president was over 100 years ago in 1915. So all Haitians are shocked and worried about the continuity and stability of government. Uh, before the assassination of, of the president, there has been a rise of violence, especially gang violence and kidnappings. So if anyone in Haiti was safe, it would have been the president and prime minister. So Haitians are puzzled because it was seemingly easy for the assassins to get into the president's home without any report of injuries or deaths within his security team. Kidnappings and violence are way up. And in recent months, missionaries have been targeted in several areas of the country. You know, we're called to do a work down here to plant churches and to reach people with the gospel. And so we, we try to go about that carefully, trying to stay safe to, to some extent, but that's not really our primary purpose in life. The deteriorating situation is leading to Haitians fleeing their country in record numbers. And because the Biden administration recently extended temporary protected status to Haitians, the U.S. is now seeing thousands crossing our southern border each month. Unemployment here is 90 percent. People would get out if they could. And in most cases, they just they don't have the money to get a passport and a visa. But Kevin says the change Haitians need has nothing to do with relocation. If people are brought from darkness to light, there can be change. So uh, that's really our goal. We're planting churches like crazy and helping build uh, new church buildings. So I, th I think that's where uh, the change has to happen ultimately. It's in the hearts of the people. For CBN News, I'm Chuck Holt. Up next, making a pass to the great outdoors, the ministry that's taking people with disabilities to places they can't go on their own. CBN presents God is For Us, verses of salvation, peace, and victory from the Book of Romans. It is filled with verses that define our need for salvation, God's free gift of redemption in Christ. Call now to get your audio CD of God is For Us, verses of salvation, peace, and victory. Yours when you become a CBN partner. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God 
through our Lord Jesus Christ. These select scriptures from the Book of Romans will lift you up and carry you through difficult circumstances. My hope is that you will let these verses fill your mind and heart. They will change your outlook and increase your faith. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com today. As the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Nutrition, exercise, essential oils, weight loss, and more. It's Healthy Living with Lori Johnson. Talk about what's in this. Join CBN health reporter Lori Johnson to get the latest information from today's top health experts. This is fantastic. Find out what you need to know to live a healthier life. Watch Healthy Living Tuesday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. Welcome back to Christian World News. They're an unreached people group that's right in our very midst, but often overlooked. Statistics show that adults and kids with disabilities are less likely to go to church. It's why one pastor decided to reach out to them using an all-terrain wheelchair and the great outdoors. Heather Sells brings us that story. Deep in the woods of a Cincinnati park, an adventure for those whose lives are normally heavily restricted. Big tree root coming up. Doug Frank is all in for every twist and turn. So are Diane, Mary, and a handful of kids. These hikes are 45 minutes long. They're in the middle of the woods, putting those with disabilities in situations they normally would not be, along with the Sherpas, the volunteers who are carrying them. He likes that he's hanging with friends. All right, you ready? You guys ready? Have fun, Mr. Doug. It's Doug's fourth hike, and he and his mom are sold. All of these people at this church are the most amazing group of people. They all befriend him. They don't just do the typical chatter that you get from strangers. They want to know him. And for a man used to battling cerebral palsy, the woods offer a welcome challenge. He's almost looking forward to getting a little hurt because that's what everybody else, they'd come home and they'd say, I had this great time, but I hurt my elbow or twisted my ankle or something. Yeah. And to him, that would be a good reason to hurt your body instead of just therapy. Yeah. Pastor Kevin Schwieger started Luke 5 Adventures right before the pandemic. His aha moment, returning from a hike and realizing a wheelchair-bound friend might be hurt if he talked about his fun time. It just haunted me and hurt my heart to, to realize that she would never, ever be able to experience this side of heaven, what I had experienced. And it, uh, that just bothered me to the core. On a quest to help not only his friend but others like her, Schwieger discovered an all-terrain one-wheeled chair. It's made in France and popular in Europe, but unknown here at home. He also discovered more about the country's disability community, with more than 60 million adults and 3 million kids. Landmark research on these children shows those with chronic health conditions often never become part of a church community. One in four with developmental delays, learning disabilities, or anxiety never attend a service as well as one in three with brain injuries, autism, or speech problems. The world of families living with disabilities is a lonely island of despair for most of them. And there is literally zero chance for them to get off the sidewalk, out of the bedroom. The ministry, named after the men in Luke 5 who carried their friend to Jesus, does just that, carrying those with disabilities where they cannot go. The simple concept has proved life-changing for both those in the chair and their families. Laura and her husband have two children with chronic health conditions and say the hikes provide much-needed fellowship and a break as the volunteers care for their kids. To not have to worry 
uh, where this wheelchair needs to go or without it falling or where, what path can we take. But we're out there and we're, we're able to just relax and be at peace with each other and converse and, and just be quiet. Many hikers and their families also recognize that time in God's creation is restorative. Whitney Blackston's eight-year-old daughter can't see or talk, but she loves the outdoors. On one hike, that meant plunging her tiny hand into a stream. She experiences God's creation through hearing the birds, hearing the insects and feeling nature, the trees, the leaves. She actually asked to go um, as often as she can go. Luke 5 has strategically partnered with the Cincinnati Children's Hospital and the Parks Foundation to broaden support and expertise. The faith-based nonprofit trains its volunteers to safely transport hikers, and that includes carefully strapping them in at the start. You know, we're leading them one way and the other as we go around the, the, the trails or we're going down and up, sometimes very steep inclines, and we've been in places where it's very steep. Um, and it, as you can see, our chair is a one seat fits all. The day we visited, the team took extra care securing Betty, a former hiker who now battles ALS. Moments later, the smiles and joy showed just what it all meant. It's not rocket science. It's love. <laughs> Schweiger has a vision for Luke 5 and its multiplication. Churches across the country reaching these unreached people and their families through a ministry that draws people together in the most beautiful places in their communities. Reporting in Southwest Ohio, Heather Sells, CBN News. Fantastic story, Heather. Thank you for bringing that to us. Coming up, the historic document that shaped the world. How the contributions of church leaders laid the groundwork for religious freedom today. That story in a moment. Stay with us, folks. From Washington, D.C. Good evening and welcome to Faith Nation. Uncompromising stories, interviews, and analysis from veteran journalists David Brody, John Jessup, Jenna Browder, and Eric Phillips. Bringing you the political news that matters. Regulations on the energy industry are going to have dramatic ripple effects throughout the economy. News you can trust. We're people who are committed to protecting the most weakest and the most vulnerable. Watch Faith Nation, weeknights at 6. Orphan's Promise is committed to loving and serving at-risk children, to helping keep families together, and to creating opportunities for strong and sustainable communities around the world. We're working in over 60 countries around the world, and with your help, we can do even more. There's an old African proverb I love that says, if you want to run fast, run alone. But if you want to run far, run together. At Orphan's Promise, we want to run far so we can touch the lives of as many orphaned and vulnerable children as possible. But we don't want to go alone. We're out to change the world, one child, one family, one community at a time. Will you join us? God is for us, a special audio recording from Pat Robertson. Neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Reduce stress and anxiety while dwelling on the promises of God. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner and get your copy of God is for us. Welcome back. Christians from across America gathered in the heart of the nation recently to pray for restoration and revival. It was all part of an event called Prayer at the Heart of America. Nearly 3,000 met in Lebanon, Kansas to cry out for healing in the land. People from all 50 states as well as several countries came in, uh, were in attendance. One leader told CBN's prayer link that they hope to see tens of millions of people put their faith in Jesus Christ. We're contending for the heart of our nation what the greater intent is for the souls of its population. Again, a tie, 33 million people being swept into the 
grace of the Lord for salvation. New names written down in glory. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is our prayer. The day-long event also included prayer rides where people drove to different parts of our country uh, praying along the way. The Museum of the Bible in our nation's capital has a special exhibit on the Magna Carta right now. The historic Great Charter of Freedoms from England was first written in the year 1215. The museum's display boasts some of the most precious artifacts in the Western world. And as Jennifer Wishan reports, tourism officials hope it's the type of exhibit that draws visitors back to the city. The Museum of the Bible is displaying two versions of the Magna Carta and much more. Everybody knows about Magna Carta, but most people, I would assume, don't know that the first clause of Magna Carta is about the freedom of the church. And that one of the authors of Magna Carta is an archbishop, Stephen Langton, uh, who is a biblical scholar and uh, used his theological knowledge and expertise to use the Bible to argue against what the king was doing. The Magna Carta was revised several times. The museum has the version from the year 1300, which was viewed by American founding father Thomas Paine, author of Common Sense, and the 1217 version that started something spectacular. The 1217 document is is the one that essentially goes on to become English law. Also on display, the charters of the forest that reestablished certain rights for the lower classes of the period and were issued in conjunction with each Magna Carta. There's also a medieval sword, a replica of King John's bejeweled clothing, and a lawyer's reference copy of early English law. Despite the Magna Carta's message of individual freedom, the exhibit also points out the extreme anti-Semitism of the time, In 1217, the king's regent issued a dire directive. Which made it a law that the Jews in England had to wear a badge on their clothes Mm. to identify themselves. And so England becomes the first country in Europe to make this a legal requirement. The exhibit includes the Codex Valmadonna, which dates from 1189, the only known Jewish text to survive the eventual expulsion of Jews from England in 1290. And so, again, part of our story is that rights uh, need to be defended and and justice needs to be continuously uh, fought for. It's the type of mega attraction tourism officials in Washington, D.C. and cities across the country hope draw in badly missed tourists. It's exciting to be where we are, but to to really look at the economic hit that we've taken as an industry has been a very difficult road. In Washington, tourism generates $8 billion and accounts for 80,000 jobs. Typically, the city hosts more than 20 major conventions. This year, they'll host three. Tourism officials are marketing to people who live within driving distance of the city. And Ferguson points out while most cities are open for business, tourists should expect some changes. Keep in mind that if you're coming to the city and you're traditionally accustomed to going into the Smithsonian or the zoo, which is also a Smithsonian, you now have to go online to get time tickets. Um, so you don't want to show up without a, a, a ticket. And here at the Museum of the Bible, curators are excited to show visitors the biblical basis for the Magna Carta, which inspired the freedoms we enjoy in America today. Jennifer Wishon, CBN News, Washington. Thank you, Jennifer. Stay with us, folks. We go inside Israel when Christian World News returns. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the work of your spirit, Lord God, with this movement of getting the Bible, Lord, into public schools. Watch the prayer link. Tuesday morning at 7.30 on the CBN News Channel. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Wednesday night at 830 on the CBN News Channel. God is for us. A special audio recording from Pat Robertson. If God be for us, 
Who can be against us? Pat Robertson reads verses of salvation, peace, and victory. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to CBN.com to become a CBN partner and get your copy of God is for us. Affirm your faith, reduce stress and anxiety while dwelling on the promises of God. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com and get your copy of God is for us today. Available now. Finally this week, the Bible describes the Babylonians conquering Jerusalem and destroying the temple. An amazing discovery from 3,000 years ago sheds new light on the holy city. Emily Jones has more. Welcome to Inside Israel, where we show you what's happening in Israel and the Middle East. Recent protests over water shortages in Iran have grown into calls for a regime change. Thousands of angry Iranians in the province of Kuzakstan have marched through the streets. They accuse the government of diverting water to drill for oil and to drive the area's ethnic Arabs out. They use the water as a weapon to force or a forcibly migrating the Ahwazi people because Ahwaz land is the heartbeat of Iranian economy, such as oil, gas. It remains to be seen how far this movement will spread, and many are skeptical the regime will collapse at this time. Archaeologists excavating in Jerusalem have uncovered part of the ancient city wall from almost 3,000 years ago. The wall on your screen right now dates back to the first temple period and would have protected ancient Jerusalem for about 200 years, from the 8th century BC until about 587 BC. You touch something or you walk on something or you lean against something that you know somebody did the same thing. 2,600 years ago. The book of 2 Kings describes the Babylonians overtaking Jerusalem and setting the city on fire. Archaeologists found evidence of that burning just inside the wall. Violence between Israeli Arabs and Jews flared recently in a way that rocked the country. There is hope, though, as one group is bringing Jews and Arabs together through the game of tennis. Here at the Israel Tennis and Education Center in Ramat Hasharon, Arabs and Jews are learning to coexist. These young people recently gathered for a day of food and fun to learn how to build a better future. I see a great opportunity here to build bridges between the cultures and, you know, and, uh, and I, f I feel that tennis is the best game you know, to, to build this bridge. Tennis educates you to respect one another, to complement one each other. There's a lot of respect. The organizers hope to expand this program throughout the country to promote coexistence through sports. For more stories like this, you can watch our Jerusalem Dateline program at cbnnews.com. Back to you. Thank you so much, Emily. Folks, that's it for this week's edition of Christian World News. Until next week, goodbye and God bless you. <laughs>